Good morning, guys. This is Thursday, August 6th, and workout today, very similar to last week, all right, um, in terms of the aerobic lactic capacity kind of uh, work we're going to be doing. Um, same, same for the strength work, actually. It's a pretty similar to last week. So use last week, if you did it, as a, um, as a baseline, and then uh, we'll go from there, all right? Now, for our warm-up, what we're going to do is we're going to start with three rounds for quality of 30 plate hops, 10 inchworms, and 15 body rows, all right? So I'll show you all that here in a second. Uh, what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna, dim, um, gonna go through the entire workout, and then I'll have a demo of each of the movements that we'll play after this one, all right? So we do that for a warm up. Again, three rounds for quality. Then for the strength piece, it's gonna be alternating sets of a single leg Romanian deadlift and a dumbbell bent over row, okay? Now um, we're gonna be doing four sets of both, of six reps of the single leg RDL. So that's gonna be six reps, or sorry, six reps on my right leg, six reps on my left leg. And for the dumbbell bent over row, same thing. Uh, 10 reps though, four sets, 10 reps on my right arm, then on my left arm, all right? So you're gonna do all of the RDLs, and then you're gonna do all of the bent over row. That's one set. Go back to the RDL, back to the bent over row, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Moving on to our aerobic capacity. Now, uh, when we see workouts like this, okay, we, we like to call this aerobic capacity, also like to call it a lactic threshold capacity. So what happens when you're exercising at a very high intensity is your body creates lactate. And as it creates lactate, um, it needs to flush that out, okay? Now the best way to train your body to flush that out, which is ultimately gonna mean you're going to reduce your fatigue, allow you to push harder for longer, all right, the best way to do that is basically consistent pace type of activity, okay? Now, a lot of the uh, types of movements we do can also uh, benefit this type of uh, capacity training, but when we think about like running or rowing or biking, um, these types of activities seem to do it the best, okay? So what we're gonna be doing today, it's gonna start off eight minutes of an easy pace, okay? Now, when I say easy pace, what we're thinking of here is somewhere in the approximate intensity range of between 50 and 60%, okay? So you don't wanna think about this as being a fast movement. It's more of like an eight minute, almost a warm up type, type pace. Then we're gonna to go to six minutes, slightly faster, okay? Now, the slightly faster, um, it, it's not gonna feel a whole lot different, okay? Somewhere between 60 and 70% of, of like, say, of a race pace, if you will, uh, for intensity. Uh, but again, think of this almost as like 14 minutes of kind of like a warm up, followed by six minutes where it's real work, okay? Now, after we do that six minutes slightly faster, the four minutes, moderate pace. This is where we're gonna finally start picking up the pace somewhere between 70 and 80%, okay? Now, um, of course, by the time we get to this point, it should feel challenging to start to get into this moderate pace territory. Then for the last two minutes, you're gonna run as fast as you can, okay? Or bike or row or, uh, or whatever we're gonna be doing as an aerobic type activity today, as fast as you can. Now, as fast as you can after you've done this here, 18 minutes of work, that's gonna probably be about 85%, but it's gonna feel closer to 100%, okay? So we want you to, uh, to get into a, a territory where you're not gonna feel comfortable, but we also don't want a lot of fluctuation in the the pacing within each of the segments, okay? So what I mean by that is I don't wanna start this two minutes really going as hard as I can and then end up whereas like the last 30 seconds I have to walk, okay? You wanna be able to get to a pace where you're able to move and keep moving at that same pace, okay? Now, if you have a watch, I would use a watch and uh, set up an interval timer where you count these intervals, eight, six, four, two, um, and then use that as like a baseline, okay, of, of uh, how, how quick you're going. A lot of the watches now, you know, they have the, the smart watches anyway, they have the functionality to actually see what your intensity rates are. Um, so you can use the, the approximate intensity rates as a guide. Um, again, it's not gonna be exact because we are doing this for 20 minutes and there's gonna be a, uh, basically a point where after you go long enough, it's gonna be quite hard to maintain like these intensity ranges in this later section, okay? Um, and what I mean by, mean by that is, let's say, if I wanna work in the 70 to 80% range, 
after I've been running for 14 minutes, uh, it might be hard for me to just stay there. So my watch might say I'm working like say 85%, but you want to, it, so play around with it. It's more of like, how does it feel to you? You don't want it to feel like you're dying, um, but you do want it to feel like you're moving pretty quickly, okay? Um, so we do that total of 20 minute time. Then we have a little alternating V up after party, eight sets. Tabata style, 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest, all right? So with that, we're gonna now cut over to uh, the movement demos for today. Right, so we're gonna start off with 30 plate hops. Now, for those of us who don't have plates at home, what I'm gonna use here is a, uh, about, well, it's about a three inch box, okay? You can find anything that's gonna be maybe about that high or so, two to three inches. Otherwise, what you can do is basically just jump over like a, a you know, cord on the ground. Um, something just to create a little bit of movement and get your legs moving, okay? Now, the way this is going to work is I'm going to be right here, I'm going to jump up, jump back down, okay? The idea behind this is that it's actually going to help prepare us for the aerobic capacity part of today, okay? We're getting some of the stretch reflex working and just preparing our ankles to take on that load of running or double unders, anything like that. All right, for the inchworm, what's going to happen? I'm going to stand up, feet underneath my hips. I'm going to push my hips back at the same time, reach towards the ground. Stand on the ground, walk out, push up, walk my feet back to my hands. All right, so body row, also known as a uh, horizontal pull-up. Um, now, I'm assuming your setup's not going to look exactly like mine. Uh, what I have here is a uh, barbell set at, at about belly button height, okay? Now, um, the barbell, I am pulling the barbell into the rack, so that way it's not gonna move as I do this row. Right? Now, you can really use anything you have around, okay? whether it's like a table, you can use a towel on a, on a door, um, you can use rings or a TRX, anything like that if you have it. What we're gonna do, though, is we're gonna set up row position. Right? Step back, pull, bring that bar all the way in, lower down. Now. The entire time here, I'm focused on keeping my core as straight as I can, or sorry, my body as straight as I can, my core tight, right? If I was thinking about a straight line from a heel all the way into my shoulder, that's what we're going for. So, again, I'm like this, pull, down. All right, for the single leg RDL. Right, what RDL stands for is Romanian deadlift. Now, because I'm doing this single leg, it's not gonna be the exact same motion as if I was doing a regular Romanian deadlift, where, say if I have a barbell, I start, bend my knees, push my hips back, come back up, all right? Because I'm doing a single leg, what's gonna happen is my leg that's not working is going to move backwards as I come down and then back up, okay? Now, um, you, if, say, it's really hard to balance doing it this way, you can also, Basically, put your toe on the ground and go down that way as well, okay? So, I have here a dumbbell. You have two options. You can hold the dumbbell either in the opposite arm to the leg you're working or in the same arm, okay? It does not really matter which you're gonna do. Just pick one that's gonna be comfortable, comfortable for you. And because we do this week to week, try to use the same way or same method each week just to have something to build on. Um, unless you're, say, stuck with just one dumbbell, then you can play around, figure out which one you want as the weeks progress. All right, so again, what's gonna happen here? I'm gonna hold this dumbbell. I'm going to shift my weight and then come back up, right? Now, when we do this, a lot of the times we really wanna kinda twist, like this here. What I wanna see is trying to keep that hip stable and come back, right? Now again, you can either hold the dumbbell in the same weight or same arm as the leg you were using as I was just doing, or you can switch it up, all right? So now I have it on my right arm, working my left leg, and come back, okay? Now, as low as you go, that's completely up to you. And there is no right or wrong. You don't want to be so low to where we're gonna be rounding our back, you wanna think about it keeping a stable spine the entire time, just as if you're doing a regular deadlift. Now, for the dumbbell bent over row, 
Again, we're gonna use that dumbbell. It can be the same dumbbell or a different dumbbell, doesn't matter. Now, uh, what's gonna happen here is I'm gonna bend over, all right? You can support on your knee if you want to, or you can have your hand out to the side, keeping your back as flat as you can. Row as high up, get that dumbbell to touch your chest if you can. Come back down, up, down, all right? Now you can do this, we can play around with different hand positions. We can have it where my hand's in a neutral grip, like this. I can also go at kind of like a 45 degree angle, or you can go completely pronated, like that. You also have a supinated version, okay? Now, um, because we are doing this for week for week, and as of right now, there's really no idea of how long we're gonna be going over or going through and doing this. I would play around with the grips, okay? So practice maybe one, one week, go neutral grip, one week 45, one week supinated, one week pronated, all right? Our after party, what we're gonna be doing for this is gonna be eight sets of 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. That means 20 seconds of work, 10 seconds of rest of an alternating leg V-up. Now, um, so I have very tight hamstrings, making V-ups pretty challenging to do. Uh, now, when you do the alternating leg, it actually uh, increases the ability to do the movement uh, because you're not requiring as much, uh, basically as much tension throughout the whole hamstring system as you're doing this movement. But what I like to do beforehand is really just stretch out a little bit, especially after all that running. Uh, stretch out, get the hamstrings a little loose, then, we're gonna to come to the ground. This movement, the only difference between this and a regular V up, regular V up B, something like this, is only one leg goes up. That's it. 